Yo, how's everybody doing today? It's your boy Airboy, and I'm back doing another fanboy interview. And this time, I'm going to be taking a look at the TNT-01 EX-30 Jetfire. <clears throat> now, before we look at the figure, we shall look at the box. Here's the box. There's an image of Jetfire. Jet, jet mode. Something in Chinese that I cannot read. Ages 16 and over. Well, I am 16 and over. Well, I'm over. The TNT model. TNT model. Back of the box. Just all that. Bottom of the box. Nothing worth looking at. Warnings. Warning. And there's nothing at the top of the box, and that pretty much does it for the box. And here we have Jetfire. In his jet mode. Now, usually I don't go for third-party figures because they're usually fairly expensive. This guy, however, is fairly affordable, and I'll get into the price later. And, um... <coughs> sorry. This guy is a third-party knockoff of another third-party knockoff, the Iron Factory Jetfire. Iron Factory designs are usually really good, and they're very good quality. However, they are very small. And I don't care for paying like 50 or 60 bucks for a pocket-sized Transformer. And Jetfire is one of those characters who I feel eh, never really got a decent figure. I mean, the Commander class was okay, and the Generations Leader class was okay. But I always felt they were too big. Like, the visual media that I've seen that I like Jetfire in, Jetfire was always more around the same size as the likes of Optimus or Ironhide. He wasn't, like, freakishly huge like a lot of the figures are compared to the other characters. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was around that size in the IDW comics as well. Now, they did make a Voyager-class Jetfire for the Classics line, but that figure has not aged very well. The articulation was poor, and uh, mine had a quality issue where the head wouldn't look straight in a single direction. Or this guy, this guy is, like, a proper... Voyager scale Jetfire. Like, if you're like me and you think Jetfire should be something smaller than a commander or leader class, so he's not, like, you know, freakishly huge, then this is the Jetfire for you. <clears throat> like, this is, like, the best Voyager scale Jetfire I have ever seen, and it's not even an official figure. That said, uh, that Autobot logo there did not come on the figure. That is a sticker that I attached. Well, anyway, let's take a closer look here. At the jet mode. And like most G1 style Transformers with a jet mode. <clears throat> oh, sorry. It's not perfect and the robot mode's pretty much just hanging up underneath. But you know, it's not the worst I've ever seen. He does a better job of hiding the robot mode than Silverbolt does. So I'll give him that. And he does come with landing gear with rolling wheels. So he can roll a little bit. My surface isn't that good for it. You can angle these wings. I'll erase the camera a little bit. You can angle these wings however you want to. Me, I like to leave them long, but just like barely at an angle, kind of like that. Like the only real gripe I have with the jet mode is that the nose cone doesn't like to stay super secure, and that you absolutely have to have the gun stored underneath. For it to stay as secure as it is, and for it to look, you know, not gappy underneath. Oh, by the way, accessories. Um, he comes with a lot, and they are, the majority of them are already stored on him. Uh, hold on, let me get the other accessories he comes with. He also comes with a bunch of different hands. I will show these off more in the robot mode. And an alternate head, which is more in line with the G1 head. And uh, I would attach this to him if it were a mask and not a whole head. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and take a good long look, because this is the only time you're going to see it in the video. Because I don't want to go through the process of removing the head already on him, unscrewing that, and then popping this on. I would rather have this just been an interchangeable mask, but you know what? You can't have everything you want. Nothing's perfect. <clears throat> As for the other accessories, uh, pretty much everything you see on them that's dark red can be removed and counts as an accessory. Like, 
these big bits here on the back, they can be removed. So if you want to have a little more of a cleaner looking jet mode, you can. Uh, these red things here on the sides of his legs can also be removed. And uh, these side guns here can also be removed. I'll just go ahead and... However, they are a little tight, so it can be a little tricky to remove them. I'm not going to remove those things on his legs, if only because they're so tight. Oh, wait. I, I got one. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, they both come off on both sides. I like to leave them on to complete the look. And both these guns on the arms also come off, and they do have to come off in order for them to transform properly. I'm going to go ahead and reattach these, because I know for most Jetfire toys, these are almost always attached. Now, for uh, vehicle mode comparisons, so you can get a sense of scale. Here he is next to Earthrise Jet, or, uh, Optimus. You see the jet a little bit bigger than a truck. Here he is next to Earthrise Ratchet. Mine's all decked out in repro labels. You see he's a little bigger than an ambulance van. And he's meant to be like a Cybertronian vehicle. And here he is with his bitter rival, Starscream. Also from Earthrise. See how Jetfire looks next to Starscream. Alright, now let's transform this guy. Now, you don't have to remove any of the weapons or accessories on him to transform him, except for the gun. That does have to come off from the transform. You just pull it off at peg there. You take the landing gear, flip it down. There's the gun. Then a nice black plastic. And yet you do need it on him to complete the look of the jet mode, otherwise it looks just hollow underneath. <coughs> Set that aside for now. And again, you don't have to remove these, but I'm going to anyway, just so they're not in the way and you can get a better view of what I'm doing. I'll go ahead and turn the light on to help with that. All right, now the first thing you're going to want to do is you come under here, untab the arms. There are tabs there. You go in those holes right there. Untab them on both ends. Then you want to bring the shoulders up. They're on a double hinge. Just bring them up. They'll swoop into place. Repeat the process. Swoop into place. Then when you come back here, you want to lift this up. As you can see the backpack here it has two tabs that go into the back of those legs there for the jet mode. You want to take these parts here on the knees, bend them forward. Go ahead and flip the landing gear up too while you're at it. Then you want to take the legs, pull them down. You see those little square pegs there? I'm going to go into, a little hard to see, those square holes right there to help it tab, in the, tab securely. And you just split the legs, you come back here, take this black panel here, it's on a double hinge, so you want to bring it, you want to bring it down flush against the thruster like that, and you want to come over here, bring the toe forward, just like that. There we got one foot done. Repeat the process on the other side. Bring down like that. And flip the toe out like that. And there we go. <coughs> what are you doing? Tap back in. There we go. And from here, what you want to do is you want to take the nose cone. I'm going to raise the camera a little more so you can see what I'm doing. Take the nose cone. Flip that bit in, flip that bit in, bring it down, like so. Bend the head back, head back a little bit to clear away for this. Click it into place. Then you want to take this back piece here, click it into place, bring the head forward a little bit. Then you just want to... Oop, that did it. Then you just want to bring the backpack here, slide it up. No, this whole backpack assembly does come off, but you want to try to leave that attached. So it'll go up and down on a slider. And those two tabs on either side here will go into tab holes that are on the inside of the backpack right there. Just reattach that. Bring it up. It'll tab everything into place. You come to the wings. 
angle them however you need to to get things, you know, out of the way. Fold the tips in, like that. Fold the tips in, like that. And just bring them up. Angle them however you wish. Then from here, what you want to do is you want to take the sidearm guns. And again, they are a little tight. Not like super duper tight, but, you know, fairly snug. You just want to flip them around so that the barrels are facing forward. Repeat the process on this side. Then you open up this panel here. Oh, I'm sorry, you open up this panel here. And you flip open the fist. Like that. And there's a tab right there at the bottom of the fist. It'll go on that tab hole there. It's not meant to like click in the place, it just more or less holds it there. Then repeat the process on the other end. And I think we are done. Here we have Jetfire, aka the TNT 01 EX30 in his robot mode. And uh, yeah, it is, to my understanding, more or less exactly like the Iron Factory Jetfire, just bigger. Okay, I've never owned the Iron Factory Jetfire, and if you're wondering why I didn't bring in the Siege Jetfire for comparisons, I don't own that one anymore either. I had to sell it to get this one. <laughs> oh, here we have Jetfire in his robot mode. And as you can see, he looks really, really good. Like, I love how this guy turned out. Um, I believe the design itself is based off of the IDW comic design more so than the G1 appearance. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me if I am. So you can see he's done mostly in white. So it can be a little tricky to see some of those details. But he does have a few decent molded details. Which really help him stand out. Again, these red pieces on the side of his legs come off. The whole wing assembly comes off. You, and uh, you probably saw when I took it off that it doesn't, you know, look too good without it. So you didn't want to try to leave this, this wing assembly on. You see he's got a very nice blue and silver on the face. And if you want to, you can totally take these things and keep them attached to his back. Unlike most other versions of Jetfire that I've had... They don't weigh him down or anything. They're very light, so you don't have to worry about him falling back. Like, he can lean back a bit. He can lean back quite a little more than your average Jetfire figure before he topples over. Now, as far as articulation goes, the head, it's not a ball joint. So you can look up, down, all around. You can look up that far. You can look down quite a little bit. Shoulders are on a ball joint, so they can do full 360, but the wings will get in the way, even if you angle them differently. Well, if you actually, if you angle them all the way down, you can do a full 360, but they're supposed to be up. They do go in and out on a hinge. If you want to, you can use another hinge in here to bring the shoulder all the way up. There is bicep rotation, a double jointed elbow, so he gets full bend. And uh, there is wrist articulation, but due to the hand gimmick, which I will get into, you have to pull it out a little bit for the hand to rotate all the way around. Otherwise, the most you're going to get is that. All right, there is a waist swivel. And it can go all the way around, but all that stuff in his back does get in the way. And he's got an ab crunch. Which is really cool. I do like that. He can... The bits here on his leg do move out a little bit to accommodate leg movement. That's about as good as the splits are going to get. These panels here on the front can move forward to accommodate leg movement. So he can kick roughly that high. Which isn't that high, honestly. There is thigh rotation... A double-jointed knee, so 
Provided nothing gets in the way, you can get a very good bend there with the knee. And the feet. They can tilt that far. And they can move up and down. So yeah, he is... He's a pretty poseable figure. Like, you can get some very awesome poses out of this guy if you try hard enough. Which is another improvement over official jet fire figures which scale the same as this guy a lack of articulation on those this guy does not have that problem he is super duper posable like i've had fun and quality wise he feels really good like just about as good as anything official like i have had no quality issues with mine at all like i'm, I'm sure there's some problem out there because there usually is with third party figures but as far as my copy goes i haven't had any quality issues he feels good he handled solidly the joints feel as stiff as they need to. And I pretty much already pointed out the few gripes I had with this guy. And if you want to, you can totally give him his gun. I'll squeeze into his fist. Just like that. So he's got the big double barrel rifle. And if you want to, you come back here. Flip these panels open. Clear the way for these to bend down and forward. So now he's got big, impressive shoulder cannons. They have a very nice gunmetal gray paint to them and the clear, transparent plastic. Make it look like a good Energon energy flowing through it, and that looks really cool. Like, that is pretty sick. And I love how it's also totally optional. So if you don't want him to have these big bits on his back, you can totally remove them. Give him a cleaner looking robot mode. Again, you got options as far as this guy's accessories are concerned. All right, I'm going to show off the other hands real quick. Um, now, aside from the 5mm port fist, he also comes with a pair of closed fists. A pair of open hands. And a single... Where did I put that? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. And a single pointing finger. And attaching them is super easy. You just remove the fist at the ports there on the arms. And you take whatever hand you need to. Plug it into... The proper arm. Of course, it doesn't want to cooperate with me when the camera's on. There we go. There you go. So, if you totally want to, you can have them pointing or waving. Or if you just want a closed fist without a big hole in it, you can do that too. Me, personally, I like to leave the normal 5mm port hands on. Ooh. Okay, the only real gripe I have with the accessories is I wish that this head was a mask you could attach to the main head instead of being like a whole separate head. You have to attach that one port to attach this. But, you know, no biggie. Not the end of the world. Nothing's perfect, right? And, again, Autobot logo not there. That's a sticker I attached. Third-party figures usually don't have the logos on them. All right. We're about done. Let's get into robot mode comparison, shall we? I'm going to move things around. Make sure he looks good. Okay do a weird jump cut so I got time to transform the comparisons okay and now for comparison here he is next to Optimus as you can see he's, he's more or less he's more or less a slightly shorter Voyager class figure and this is more or less around the size I think Jetfire should be anyway compared to other bots so yeah almost Head to head with Optimus, just a little, just a hair shorter.
I like them that way. All right, if you like your jet fires freakishly large, that's fine, but I like them better this way. Here he is next to Ratchet. And again, mine's all decked out in Repro labels. I'm hoping Repro, li I'm hoping Toy Hacks will come out with some labels for this guy. I like a little more re red detailing on that white body. And here he is with his rival, Starscream. So yeah, he's a little shorter than Optimus, a little bigger than Starscream. I think this is a very good scale for him. And I think that just about covers this third-party jet fire. Now, as he stands, he is approximately... I'm going to raise the camera just a hair. There we go. From head to foot. Eh, about six and a half inches. And at the time of release, he's going for about between $30 to $60, depending on where you buy him. And, uh... Yeah, I do highly recommend hunting this thing down. Uh, I've seen him mostly on eBay. I think he's also on Show-Z, uh Store, a, place, a good place to get Asia-exclusive figures. He might be on Big Bad Toy Store, I'm not too sure, but your best options are Show Z and uh, <clears throat> eBay. And I do highly recommend grabbing this guy. Like, <coughs> If you want a high-quality jet fighter that is not freakishly large and still has some decent you know, quality to him, this is the go-to jet fighter. This is easily the best jet fighter figure I have ever had as far as G1-style jet fighter is concerned. Like, he is incredible. Like, honestly, he's probably one of my... Out of all the third-party figures I've gotten so far, I do have a couple more on the way. I hope to review soon. This guy's probably my favorite. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this review, hit that like button, leave a nice comment, and enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.